Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco with me, Pug Gaming, and we are up to episode 13. And boy was the last episode a good one. Very tedious in terms of placing all the departments down, but boy, do they look great now. We've now got a bit of atmosphere in this corner and things are really starting to shape up. The buildings themselves have worked an absolute treat and I'm so, so pleased that uh, Crazy Glue was involved in helping me achieve this. Things are starting to look up in Project Monaco and I'm so excited to carry this on. I talked about atmosphere earlier, things are going to get so much better. This area is what I would class as a three tier area and we're going to work on tier two today which is pretty much the road layout and some buildings around it. So you may recognise this area as the famous hairpin location for the Formula One. So you go around that hairpin and then you go through the tunnel that we created in the last episode. So the plan today is to try and replicate this area, work a bit more on the Sun Casino and the hotel and just get things looking a bit more in shape. And as you can see here, we've all got these apartments down. It's just a case now of just filling it in, a bit of detail and then getting the beautiful hairpin in shape and contoured at the correct sort of height, etc. That's going to be the tricky part. And you'll see as we go along, we have quite a lot to cover. But I won't keep you waiting any longer. Let's get straight into the action, starting with a bit of contouring, a bit of terraforming. We need to basically get these two levels to match up and start to work on the actual hairpin itself. And it did take a little while, I must admit, to uh, work out the best way to achieve this. When you're working on so many different levels in terms of terrain, it's very difficult to um, to really adjust and get things exactly how you want. And especially when you're working on roads. And if you can imagine, these two road ends, the top and the bottom, are going to be very different in terms of the height terrain. And uh, the game doesn't like that. As you can see there, we've got a strange bit of a colour lapse through that because um, we kind of break in the game in a sense, really. Um, but that doesn't matter for this in particular because we are going to end up adding... Uh, the wall against this to um, sort of create the height anyway just like it is in the uh, in real life so to speak so we have to work around these situations and there's always ways around it it's just the what's the cleanest what's the quickest way of doing so because at the end of the day I'm sure you guys also will come across these sort of situations and I want to make sure that I've got the best solution available for you guys to uh, to imitate basically just to save you guys some time because some of these episodes may look like they're quite short but trust me they are a good solid 10 to 15 hours per episode and even just things like this you know I'm, I, I end up messing around with these sort of adjustments off camera well it's on camera but obviously I'll cut that out um, and it does take a lot of time but it's definitely worth it to achieve the goals I'm going for with this build. Now I did get an interesting comment on the last video from one um, Jaron Butterworth and he said looks amazing but procedural objects makes it a non-inhabited just a full shell and that's completely right we all know that when we're working with um, procedural objects that it does remove the uh, playability and actual game ability inside it so all those apartments that I have placed down don't function in terms of they don't have any people inside it's not a residential area it's not commercial or anything at all which is causing an issue at the moment as you can probably tell from Monaco it is quite quiet in certain areas um, obviously by the harbour it's a bit more fluent now with people because we um, have some buildings that actually do work outside of procedure objects but there are ways around this so I will be showing in a future episode a way that we're going to work around that and it's a little cheeky way of doing so um, but it's the best way to do so in this situation so despite the fact that at the moment they are non-inhabited it will change um, so there will be an episode which will probably be three or four time three or four episodes ahead and um, where we'll go across all that we'll work on a bit of traffic as well because there are some bits I need to add in there's some bus routes we need to work on as well but let's not get ahead of ourselves we still have a lot of work to do as things are at the moment so thank you for your comments always keep those coming in I'm more than happy to discuss those during the video as well um, so yeah keep those coming in thank you very much Darren but anyway let's get back on track to the video so what we're doing here is we're working on 
the layer at the front entrance of the um, Sun Casino and the hotel. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to imitate what we see in real life and uh, there's an underground car park beneath the apartment which we're trying to show off um, which is difficult to do <laughs> when you're working with such tight terrain gaps etc. But talking of tough to do, this really was the envy of my pain. Trying to get this um, wall to match the, uh, the line of the road was very difficult. Purely because the road itself the angle I got was exactly how I needed it to make it look realistic but they didn't quite match up with the angles of which you can higher and lower um, these walls so that did cause me some problems I'm sure there's probably a way around this that I'm not doing um, but as you can see I did delete it and redo it many times because it was just difficult um, it doesn't help with the terrain as well I know if you're working on more level environments it's perfect and does the job well and I did get to it to a stage where it was an acceptable level um, nothing to do with the way the props have been made or the assets have been made it's all down to uh, <laughs> the difficult terrain of Monaco so that's not a stab at any creator the work they're doing is fantastic and it's um, me just being ridiculous I try to get things to work in very unique fashions but as you can see there's always ways around things and what I had to do in the end is just do a few sections together um, to get those terrain heights perfectly matched so it did take a bit of time um, but that's all part of the fun of the game really isn't it guys if you um, if you're doing things and it's always easy and simple then hey where's the challenge in that so that's how we achieve that section anyway and again we're going back to using procedural objects and I absolutely love this mod it's so good I know obviously we've already spoke about that today um, that it does eliminate the fact that it doesn't actually do anything in terms of people and having people live in those areas or work in those areas but when you're trying to create things it turns the game to a different level what we're doing here is we're basically just making ourselves a little porch here um, for the entrance of the uh, the hotel and you see just removing those two side arms and two wings now means that that can place perfectly in front of the apartment and it looks absolutely stunning it looks like it was meant to be made that way which is what I love it's almost like you're becoming a creator as well and um, that's not to take away the effort and workload that these guys do to build these to start with we're pretty much taking their work um, with procedural objects and just changing things um, to how we want it to be because everyone wants something slightly different and you know asset creators are amazing but they're not gonna be able to do everything for you they, they you know they have their own things they want to do um, which is completely understandable but uh, the procedural object mod just helps you achieve a little bit different and uh, changing the height the size it just <coughs> just adds to the game and really opens up what we can do with all of these beautiful assets now we're working on another little section which I almost missed out until I looked at the map in a bit more detail it's just part of the um, terrain um, a bit of the building itself comes out a bit further um, around the grass area so it's just like a one level building um, in between these two sections and again we're going to do the same as what we go to the roofs before we're going to tile it up with probably asphalt and then put a decal on top to make things look a little bit more interesting at first I did try and imitate the um, pattern that it has on this roof but it didn't really work out to plan to be honest so in the end you'll see that we delete all this and just do it as a standard black um, sort of paint or probably asphalt top instead and whilst we do that I'm going to leave you with a time lapse and we'll catch up in a second
So welcome back. As you can see, we've detailed the car park now for the front of the hotel. And we're now getting down to adding some of the buildings. And this is where it becomes difficult because we're building on very uneven terrain. Um, and I'm actually using the move it tool this time rather than the siege objects because I wanted to have um, people actually come into this location um, and plopping a few on top of each other, which is useful. As it really does help with adding the terrain because there's not really that many tall buildings that suit this area. So finding ones that we can duplicate and add on top of each other really does help. And again, you'll see we're using the famous pug trick of using the pavement to we terraform the area i'm guessing that's the best way to describe it i'm not too sure what we can class it as but i'm thinking the pug method is a, a good name for this it's certainly something i'm not seeing anyone else use so make sure you do that for now on guys have a crack with that and see how you get on it really does make life a lot easier when you're working on these difficult terrains to to flatten things out and uh, really really get going with it but the one thing i will say guys if you're going to use this method you might have to disable the road functionality because it's not connected to my roads it shouldn't actually be an issue but it might be if your roads are close by so make sure you have traffic manager as well and you um, decline cars from being on there next up we are moving on to something that always reminds you of monaco and it is these beautiful um, curbs for the formula one cars it's beautiful it really is i spoke to a creator who is becoming very well known in the workshop now who goes by the name of arnold j rimmer he's done some fantastic work he's um, new to the workshop but make sure you check out his stuff because he's done a lot of very nice curbs and i know there's a lot in the making for him as well he's got a lot of new ideas which um, are going to really hit the workshop really hard and it's going to be fantastic but in the meantime he did help and created these beautiful curbs which i must admit are difficult again to place down because of the terrain the way the road is um, again nothing to do with the creator itself the actual work and master uh, workmanship is fantastic it's just down to the uh, <laughs> the road terrains and not quite matching up with the thin texture layout that these curbs are but um, nonetheless we do get there eventually as I say there's always ways around things and we just had to create a few extra uh, rather than doing one curve we've done three combined together which it doesn't matter to me it's a little bit extra time but as long as it does the job and it looks good that's all i care about and they boy do they look good and it's not just these flat ones as well he also done a more boxy square version of these and also in different colors to suit different areas i understand that he's done sort of three or four other ones as well which um if you check out on the workshop all of them are on there now these curbs are on there and yeah have a go have, have some fun making a racetrack or just brighten up your streets So now we move on to a bit of detailing and we're going to start off with this hotel here so using the uh, beautiful monaco walls um, we've just got to adjust ourselves to this terrain now so as you can see the bottom part of the hotel is extremely low down versus the top half so we're gonna have to be a little bit clever in how we do this um, but with the use of trees and bushes as corrales would always say you can make things look beautiful and perfect by hiding them away so that's pretty much what we're going to do in this corner here 
Um, there are actual bushes here anyway in real life, um, so that doesn't really, you know, it's not really a false thing to be doing, but um, it certainly hides the fact of this terrain area and just brings things all up to a, a suitable level, which you'd expect, um, even on something that has irregular terrain, such as Monaco here. And again, using the pug trick, again, we are hurrying up the middle section, which is where obviously the entrance would be, um, leading on from the front gate. And watching this back did bring a few pointers to mind actually. And more the fact of how different and how much more time would be spent if all of these beautiful and amazing assets and new mods were not available. I mean, I know the Monaco series is a very difficult one and it's gonna be challenging, whatever that happens. And it's gonna be time consuming, but imagine the amount of time that I would have had to spend additionally without all of these amazing assets. I mean, even just placing this wall down, look how easy and quick it is. I know it's time lapse, but it's simple. You literally drop it down, make sure the nodes are against the two sides and job done. It's just ridiculously easy now. And doing that bit by bit, if you had a wall would have been so difficult, especially when you're trying to do curved walls, um, such as I am down hills. If you're trying to do that with individual um, walls, unless they were um, terraformed or conformed, um, it wouldn't really work. And it's just ridiculous how <laughs> how good this game has now become for a modding scene. Um, so much has been added. I mean, even just this section here, we're just adding some walls. We're basically making a scratch build here and it's simple it's so easy so quick to do i remember when i was doing this a good sort of six months back with a british challenge it was so time consuming to work with now it takes seconds and that's why this game has really excelled and this is why people can build such unique and amazing looking buildings and builds now because the possibilities of what you can do is very close to planet coaster now um, but in my opinion a lot better because of the variety of different assets in the workshop it's really incredible and just look at this I'm just using some little walls here to add to the roof and it just adds it just makes things look so much more realistic and even the modifications and changes that you want to make as you go along with the move it mod tool it's just so simple if something's out of line you'd have to delete it now you can click on it and move it around it's it is a massive game changer and my question to you guys is how much has this changed your playing ability and what has been your most exciting and game-changing mod? For me, if you're asking me, it's gonna be difficult. <laughs> I'm guessing for Monaco, it's gonna be a mixture of Move It and the Procedural Objects mods, but there are so many that I forget that I'm using, which are just amazing. So let me know in the comments section below, guys, what has really changed your way of playing this fantastic game. But anyway, let's get back to the build. And what we're working on here, this is the Sun Casino entrance. Not perfect, it's not quite in the right position, but it works for how we've built this area. So we make a little pathway up to it here. Um, and it's looking okay. Um, not perfect, like I said, but uh, it really, really works well, I think. And just adding a few plants around here just to increase the atmosphere and foliage around here. I'm quite pleased with how this has actually worked out, this whole front entrance and the casino area. Um, the cars there we've added just for props. Um, cars won't be driving around it unfortunately because they are pavements but it gives you that feeling that um, they can be. And you won't really see that many cars anyway um, at the entrance going in and out of the hotel. It's not, you know, the traffic won't be that busy around there anyway. And what we're doing now, we move back onto the wall. Um, so there is another section of the wall that carries on bending round, and there's a little planting area here with some um, palm trees um, and a bit of foliage as well with a bus stop as well. So what we're doing, just adding that in here. Um, and again, you'll see that I'm using a, um, the technique I did with the walls earlier, just because it worked better for me. I'm not saying it's the best way of doing so, just again, because of the terrain, it just makes life far easier when you are splitting these sections down and working from more than one node. And it's only these little touches that really bring areas to life. Just adding in this little tree area with the, with the um, palm trees really does add to what you're expecting to see in Monaco. And it's those little things that I don't want to miss out on, but I don't want to go too heavy that the um, prop limit is a concern or the frames per second is an issue. So we're gonna detail as best we can 
but within the limitations of what the game can handle. And we're just going to jump into one final time lapse with some music just whilst we complete two other buildings across the street from here and then we'll jump in for a final recap and some beautiful cinematics. Catch you shortly.
So guys, that brings us very close to the end of episode 13. You'll see in the previous build throughout that time lapse, we worked on another building, created a little underground car park, which I thought worked quite nicely, and just detailed the back of that as well to connect to the, uh, the road up the top there, as you can see. And this little building here, we had to try and clip in to the, uh, the bottom underneath, as it's shown here in the top left-hand corner. Very unique building quite difficult to achieve um, with the mechanics of the game itself but we managed to do so as best we could which I think worked out quite nicely but it's these challenges I really enjoy like I say we know we know we're not going to be able to get things like for like 100% but it's these situations where we have to be imaginative and even though people would think that building something like for like doesn't use your imagination it still does in my opinion I mean there's sections over here that we are having to use some imagination and some ideas to uh, sort of combat really as you can see here it's quite a drop down we had to use some purple asphalt as well to try and bring the levels back up and hide a bit of dirt sorry hide a bit of area with some dirt and some trees and add some rocks as well it's it's one of those things where it really does help and bringing down this terrain here you'll see in the end we actually end up using um, some staircases to imitate the the downwards in terms of the um, different heights and that's what I really like doing I really like the imitations you can create just by adding a few little steps here and there and obviously with move it mod and procedure objects you can move the objects right down into the um, terrain as well and really really make it look like it's part of the build and again we're going back to using the beautiful Evania rocks built for Monaco and they do look fantastic just adds to this little area here here we've already got the wall there to um, hide the gap beneath the uh, the road bridge so to speak in this sense but we're also adding some rocks to add to the um, well to the realism I guess um, and it's like I say it's these sort of challenges that I really enjoy in Monaco and I'm sure there's points in this series where you're thinking why did I not do this or why did I do that and that's what I love about it. Everyone has their own idea on how to combat certain situations and make things look like what they're hoping to achieve and in this case, what they actually see in real life. So that's very interesting. Um, it does add to um, your artillery as well. It's really improved me personally as a City Skylines player because I'm having to combat situations and try and make things look how I want them to look as well so it works both ways around obviously you're restricted a little bit on what you're building um, but all in all it's a really interesting project and by all means despite the little summer break I had there's not going to be um, big gaps in the future I do have a, a little holiday coming up but hopefully I'll have some videos already built and made for that um, situation but anyway that brings us pretty much to the end here we're just going to detail this little garden section with a fountain as you can see in the top left hand corner and i'm going to leave you guys with this and some beautiful cinematics that i put together probably some of the best so far today in this series and I, I know i say that each time but every time i build something it's it's the whole building up of this area it's the skyline we're slowly creating and all the different segments coming together and slowly looking like monaco so I will leave you here. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Hit that like button. If you're not following and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to, hit the notification button. It will let you know when my next video is out. Other than that, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching and all the best.